Well, it's good to uh, see all of you this morning. We are in a series called We Are New Hope, and we've been doing this for now five, five weeks. This is the fifth week, kind of looking back at what our core values are as a church, and as we move forward, just uh, making sure that we capture the heart of who we are. We're, we're moving into a, a new phase. We're moving into some new spaces in our building that we're very, very thankful and appreciative of uh, opportunities for ministry to kids in a greater way, uh, just this community in a greater way, and we're excited about that. And uh, as we move forward, we, we want to remain who God has called us to be. And all these years that we've seen uh, God's blessing in his hand and moving among us, we want to continue to see this. So where we've been so far, we are a relational church. We are a generous church. We are multi-generational. We are disciples. If you missed the message last week with Pastor Luke, I encourage you to get online, watch that message, and uh, it's just an incredible, powerful uh, message to all of us as a church that we are called to be disciples. And today we're talking about uh, we are servants. Our church, New Hope, for the 32 years of our existence, one of the things that we are known for is people serving, people giving of themselves, giving of their time, giving uh, of their resources to, to connect, to minister, and to help and assist people all around them, not just part of our church, but in our community and around the world uh, as it relates to our missionaries. At the end of the service today, we're going to take a time and just have some time of ministry around the altars, where we're put into practice this idea of serving one another. We're going to read some scriptures today that we're going to highlight what we're called to do as servants. We're called to love one another. We're called to, to pray for one another, to serve one another. There's so many scriptures in the Word that talks about our relationship with others, and honestly, it, uh, it really gives us a mission that we are here to serve God's purposes. He's called us. He's um, gifted us. He is using us if we will let him and we'll surrender to his purpose and his plans. God will use us in, in just incredible ways as servants of, of his. I just want to welcome a row of people here. I just met a couple of you. Uh, they're, they're here from Sioux Falls. And they're on a retreat, and uh, they're from the Sioux Falls First Assembly, and we are glad to have you part of our service uh, today. Thank you. Thank you for choosing and being here to worship with us. Turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We're going to be looking at several scriptures from the Apostle Paul this morning through several different of his letters that speak a similar message about who we are called to be as servants. give you a chance to turn there or locate that in your electronic device and you might just have to catch up because I'm going to take off right now. Romans chapter 12 starting at verse 3. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. The NIV says don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith that God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibilities seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So we see the, the church, Christ's body, as a, as a family, we see it as a body, a body with many parts, just as our body has many parts. I've got two hands, I've got five fingers on each hand, I've got two feet, I've got toes on each of those feet, I've got legs, ugly feet, ugly legs that attach my ugly feet to my body. <laughs> ugly face, no, I'm not, I'm just trying to follow the theme here, you know. Anyway, listen, all of these parts of our body make up one. And we understand that. So if I, if I saw someone you know, coming toward me on the sidewalk, I'm not going to say, hey, look at Judy's eye. There's Judy's eye coming toward me. 
We just don't, we just don't do that. Bob's got great hair. I mean, if I just said, hey, Bob, Bob's hair. No, all of the, all of the parts of our body make up who we are. And we know ourselves by, by our name. We know each other by our names. And we have some features that, that set us apart from others. Um, but largely, we are very, very similar. We're all people. Um, we're a body. We have a body made up of many parts. And he says the church is similar. The body of Christ is similar. We're all different parts who make up the one body. We live in a consumer culture. Meaning that if we want something, we just go and buy that, right? We're used to doing that. In the last year or so, it's been a little bit more difficult. We can go to the store and not find things that we need. You can even look online and find out they're not, they don't know when that'll be in. It's, it's changed a little bit with some of the supply issues, but in our culture, when we need something, we just go and buy it. And we don't even have to go to the store. We can just get online and in a couple of clicks, we can order and get whatever that is, and within maybe a day or a couple of days, it shows up at our door. It's amazing. With a couple of clicks, you can get onto a grocery store, order some groceries, drive your car through, and they'll just put it in your trunk and away you go. It's so easy. This consumer culture makes it easy for us just to, to get what we want. Many shop around for the best quality at the best price, and shopping on the internet lets you do that. You can read all the reviews and know what you're getting to make sure what you're getting is quality. This is a consumer culture that we, that we live in. In this philosophy of a consumer culture, listen, we don't buy anything, we don't do anything, we don't get anything, we don't support anything without asking ourselves a couple of questions. What's in it for me? How does this benefit me? It's a very self-centered, very self-serving perspective, but that's the culture that we live in. It's an attitude or a perspective that is even in the church today. Most people Choose a church based on what they get from that church. There may be people sitting here today who are, you're looking for a church. And I'm assuming there's a few people. Every Sunday we have families who are here checking out the church. And here's some things that they're looking for. One, 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 they're looking for good kids ministry, looking for good youth ministry, an active senior adult group. They're looking for a certain style of music. Maybe you're looking for a choir. Our choir is, is not singing as not singing today, but we typically have a choir, we have an orchestra. They're uh, looking for what the preaching, the teaching is like. Is it something that is good and solid, something that I, can, that I can listen to, buy in and believe and follow? You know, I found that there are a number of people, and we just want to say hi to our online crowd that's watching right now. Uh, welcome, we're glad that you're here. I found out recently, and I've, I've kind of known all along, that there are people who are listening, who are part of our church that we've never even met before. A couple of weeks ago, I met someone who had been watching online for a year and a half, listening to our sermons, listening to our teaching, and I got to meet her and talk with her and pray with her, and um, I just, it's just amazing. So many of you that we don't know, we haven't met, you're part of our family, we would love to get connected with you. You can just reach out, send an email, send an email to, to me, jeff at newhope.church, and I would love to connect with you. We wanna know who, who people are. But listen, we, we, we do a lot of things like that where we can shop around and look for what is, what is the product. Is it something that I can believe in? Is it something that I can buy into? A lot of the decisions that make the choices on whether we're going to, to be part of something comes down to preferences. Pastor Austin talked about that a little bit a couple of weeks ago, talking about uh, the fact that we are multi-generational. We, we have preferences that are, are across the spectrum. And some people like it this way, some people like this, some people don't like this, some people like that. And they're all just preferences. And we all have them. And it's not a matter of whether those preferences are right or wrong. It's just differences. And we're all different. We can look around the room today and, and realize the fact that every one of us is different. While there is so much similarities in all of us, no matter if our skin color, uh, our ages, there are things that, that make us different, but we're more, so much more similar and alike than we are different. But people are looking for a place where they, where they fit, where they can be fed. 
where they can serve, be served, and feel good about that. So we show up basically with the idea of what, what do I get? In marriage, most people choose a, a marriage partner based on what do, I, what do I get out of this relationship? More so than what they give to their future spouse. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, Paul quotes the words of Jesus when he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. He's saying it's much more important and there's much more blessing that comes in giving than us receiving. But our focus, our mentality is often on the receiving part. What do I get from this? What do I receive from this? In the context of the verse that Paul is talking about this, it's of him giving himself to others who are in need. So if our sole purpose in coming to church or being part of a church is to receive, then we are cheating ourselves from the blessings of God because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Can you say that with me? It's more blessed to give than to receive. It's, it's kind of similar to if you went to work and you didn't do anything. You just sat around doing nothing, but you still expected to, to get a paycheck. That, that's only gonna last so long and then you're gonna be out on the street looking for a new job. Right? I'm not saying if you don't get involved here that you're going to be out on the street and we're going to kick you out and fire you. I'm not saying that. But there is something about the fact of being involved in, in giving and serving, and there's more blessing in that than what we get out of something. So maybe you come, maybe you're looking for those types of things. Maybe you've been here for a long time. Maybe you're brand new today. You're looking for a, a place that fits some of these preferences, that, that fits the needs in your family. But the reality is there is so much more blessing for opportunities that you have to give than the ways that you can receive. And I'll tell you, we have, some, we have the best kids ministry, youth ministry, ministry to adults, senior adults, music, all of that, that you're gonna find anywhere. I promise you it's right here. But uh, what makes it great is the people who serve and give. And there's some of you who have gifts and abilities, and we're looking for uh, you to plug in and find a place where you can use those gifts. The Bible tells us in Mark 10, 45, and the same in Matthew 20, 28, it's the same verse. It says this, the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus prefaces that. He's the one that said that. The son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. He prefaces that by saying, whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be a slave to everyone else. Being a servant. We are servants. Unselfish servanthood is defined as this, a devoted and helpful follower, humble before God, ready to act as, as the Holy Spirit nudges and inspires us to help us meet the needs of other people. That is the mark of spiritual maturity, serving. It's the mark of le uh, leadership ability. Paul said this in, in Philippians chapter two. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude toward others that Christ Jesus had. Verse seven says he gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble position of a slave. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. He is the greatest example of a servant that we could ever follow. We don't come to be served, but we come to serve. Romans 12, six, we already read, says in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if we are coming to serve and we want to be servants, listen, God has given us gifts so that we can do that well. We've all been given gifts by God. That's what Romans 12, six tells us. Not for our own personal uh, benefit and enjoyment, but to serve, to help, to bless, to minister to others for the health and the strength of the body of Christ in order that we all might glorify and minister and honor him. If I were to give you a, a, a candy bar, which I think is the greatest candy bar that has ever been in existence, this is the outrageous candy bar by Reese's. 
It's been a long time, but I've, I've, I've handed a lot of these out, and I thought today would be a great day to uh, talk about the outrageous candy bar. This is, this is the most amazing candy bar ever. How many of you have still never tried the outrageous candy bar? Raise your hand. Look at this. I've done a terrible job of promoting this candy bar. And I know it's been months since I've talked about it, but I, I have a gift. I actually have two of these that I want to hand out today. And I'm going to hand them out by just flinging them to the crowd. So this one's going to go somewhere in this direction. Okay? Pastor August is saying right back there. I don't know that I can make it back there without like, t- accidentally taking off somebody's head. But here it goes. You ready? Raise your hand if you've never had one. All right, here we go. Amy! Have you had one of those before? You have. Well, you can keep that for your benefit, or you can give that to somebody else who hasn't had. All right, somewhere over here, here we go. Catch, we got it? Oh, there we go, all right. So, I would say, if you want a candy bar, peanut butter, chocolate, caramel, and Reese's Pieces all wrapped into one candy bar. It's not the least calories of a candy bar that you're going to find. Actually, probably the most, but I highly recommend that candy bar. But here's the deal. For those that that receive that candy bar, that's a gift. That's a gift from me. And you use that for your own benefit. You can have somebody share that with you and get a lot of pleasure out of sharing, uh, sharing a great candy bar together. But that gift is for you. Listen, the gifts that God gives us very different. They're not intended to be used on ourselves. They're not intended for us. They're intended to be used for others. They're intended to be shared for the benefit of the body of Christ. So God is calling us to a completely different mindset than the world around us, the culture that we live in. The Bible says nothing about perks or preferences. It's not about me. It's not what's in it for me or what I can get out of it. But it says a lot in the scriptures about the body of Christ and what we are to be to others. President John F. Kennedy, famous for saying, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Let's rewrite that. Ask not what can your church do for you. Ask what can you do for your church. You see, we know that Christ has given gifts to his body. He's given gifts to every one of us. Every single one of you sitting here today are the recipient of gifts from, from, from Christ. He has given you abilities. He's given you things to do. Some of you may still be trying to discover what is it that he has gifted me? What, is he, what has he done? What has he given me that is to be used for other people? And your discovery of that, not knowing maybe exactly what that gift is. Some of you know full well. Some of you are very, very gifted and it's very evident by other people. But The reality is, is in your discovering, just find a place to get plugged in. Discover what that is. There are a ton of opportunities in a church to get involved. Listen to what Peter said, 1 Peter chapter 4. He said, the end of the world is coming soon. Never in our lifetime has this ever been more real. The coming of the Lord is, the, the end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. I've, I've highlighted a few words in here. Most of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers over a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home or offer hospitality, some versions say, with those who are in need of a meal or a place to stay. Share your home. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All power and all glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Those four words that I have highlighted in those verses, pray, love, share, share your home, and serve. All of those are active verbs focused on what I'm supposed to do. They're not passive verbs on what is being done for me. Does that make sense? Active verbs where we are involved. This is why we're part of a church, so that we can use what God has given us. Listen, to have been given a gift from God intended to be used by serving and giving and loving and praying and blessing others and not use it 
The Bible has some strong words. It says it's sin. To have this gift that God has given you and not to use it to that person who's not using it, it's called sin. James 4, 17, he said, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not to do it. We are to be using the gifts that God has given us to serve other people. We are servants. There are people who say, yeah, well, you don't have to go to a church to be a Christian. Anybody ever heard that saying before? Nobody? A few heads. Yeah, you don't have to go to a church to be a Christian. Listen, a fish doesn't have to be in water to be a fish either. But what happens to a fish that's out of water for a period of time? Yeah, it can't live. I propose the same thing happens to a Christian who's not in church. Can you be a Christian and not be in church? There's so many things that the scripture calls us to do that would be impossible without being in community. Not saying that you cannot survive on your own, but it's going to be tough. The idea that you can go to church and, and not be a Christian, I, I think it's, it's tough. Technically, you know, we, we can't go to church. We learned this a few weeks ago in talking about being relational because the church isn't a building. It's not a church service. The church is people. The church is the body of Christ. So we're not talking about a building or, or a Sunday morning meeting. The church is people who belong to God. And the Bible's clear that we're supposed to gather together. What we're doing today is biblical. We're to gather together. And as we see the day of the Lord's return getting near, we're, we're, we're to assemble together to encourage one another more and more. It's a time when we can connect on a deeper level with God and with each other. Jesus said, when two or three gather in his name, he's right there in the middle of them. Church is so much more than a, than a Sunday gathering, it's a community. And Jesus said, the world will know that you are my disciples by the way that you love each other. And this community of, of believers, this community of disciples, followers of Jesus, we care for each other, we grow together, we learn together, and we serve together. We're not called to do this alone. We're not to keep this to ourselves. We are to share this with other people and see the world around us transformed. So when we use these gifts that God has given us and share them with others in obedience to him, there is blessing that comes from that. There is blessing from God when we, when we use those gifts, not just for ourselves, but to uh, the people around us, the entire church. And in that process, we will honor, we will glorify, and we will worship God. Paul said in Romans 12, just as our physical bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. The picture that I, that I gained from reading that verse is that of a jigsaw puzzle. Jesus taught a lot with analogies and parables. And while this, there's not a perfect analogy for for everything. This, this is an analogy that I think makes sense to me if you think about this. Puzzle pieces are a lot like people. We're, we're all similar in so many ways, but there's no two people that are alike. The same as there's no two puzzle pieces alike. How many, how many puzzle, puzzle people do we have? You like to do puzzles. Some of you are just completely frustrated by it. Some people love them. But I know that there's times where we want to make two pieces look alike. Like you find the piece and you're going, this has got to fit. And you're even tempted to take out your knife and just trim a little bit off of the edge to make that piece fit in that spot. But every piece has a place. They're not alike, but they're all so similar. The puzzle pieces aren't designed to operate independently, but they're, in, they're intended to be connected one to another. And the only way that they have meaning and purpose is as part of the entire puzzle. When you finish a puzzle, I don't know if you've ever had this experience of missing a piece or two. It's almost nothing more frustrating than doing a puzzle, a thousand piece puzzle, and get down to missing a piece 
It's like listening to a song without the last note. It's like watching a Hallmark movie and not getting the kiss. I know a lot about Hallmark movies. Well, I'm around a lot of Hallmark movies. Christmas all summer long, Hallmark. But you know what I'm saying, it's just not complete. And it's tough when, when, it, when it's not finished. Listen, every piece matters. Every piece of a puzzle matters. And when one piss, one <laughs> Lord, help me. When one piece is missing, just not, not the same. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Are you all with me? Can we recover? There's a lot of red faces out there. I'm sure mine is too. It's not the worst I've said, but. Thanks for loving me anyway. Say, we love, we love you, Pastor. All right, thank you. Forgive me. We'll move on. When one piece is missing, it's just not complete, and it's the same with the church. When you're not here and when you're not in your place doing your part, we're not complete. Listen, we have a history of serving. This church, from the beginning, 32 years of serving, teams of people who serve and give, we don't employ a lot of people. We, it, we're, we operate by, by servants, people who give of their time. And that has been the success and the, and the value of this church over the years. It, it was an impression 25 years ago when we first met uh, New Hope and came to interview. It was wildly evident that this is a church of people who, who serve and give and love their church. It's not common. One of the... One of the uh, People in the eight o'clock service reminded me a few years ago on a Sunday, we had a fire truck pull up in our driveway. And we're all wondering, you know, what the, what, what the, what the experience is, somebody, you know, why that fire truck is here. And I don't know if you remember this, but there was some kind of a flood or something going on. And they came here because they said, we need help. And this place is known to, to, for people who serve. So they came looking for help at church on a Sunday. That's, that's an amazing thing. But that's what we've been known for. Listen, all of our, all of our, everything is cared for by volunteers. This place is completely cleaned by volunteers. And some of you are part of that team. 65 people. We're opening some new space over here. We need about 35 more. And I think we've already signed up about 20 or 25 more people just in the last couple of weeks. That's how amazing you are. All of our lawn care is, is done by volunteers. And it's the best manicured lawn in all of Urbandale. And I would say in almost all of Des Moines. And that is a great testimony to our community. We're, we're taking responsibility for the rest of our, our new yard over here and we need more people that can that can mow and so there is a table for our lawn care team listen we've got flower beds and and all of that around here that's all taken care of by volunteers if you've ever if you've ever grown flowers or had roses that rose that rose bed out here i mean it takes hours every week for them to deadhead those roses so that they always look full and blooming I'm, I'm just amazed at the people who give and volunteer. Our gatekeepers that do safety and security, uh, provide medical care if there's ever a need, they're, they're looking for, for more people. I, I found out that we're looking for 40 more youth leaders for middle school and high school. And it doesn't matter what your age is. We're looking for grandparents to serve there too. Parking lot ministry, I, we, need, we need people helping to direct traffic and you know, there's an there's a incredible opportunity. I would love, love, love if everybody, everybody found their place. Now listen, we do, I, I think and I believe that we do better than most churches and I, I, I believe that 100%. But I don't want to just be better than, I want us to be the best. I, I want us to do our best. I think it would be absolutely amazing when you think of the church as, as a puzzle. All of us in our place doing our part, serving one another. That your, your response is, yes, I, I, I belong, I'm a member at New Hope, and this is what I do there. This is, what I, this is how I serve there. If everybody could say that, 
this is my church, I love my church, come be part of my church, I do this there. And there's a, a host of ways that you can be involved. Our Mission 101 is, a, is an onboarding to how uh, the opportunities that there are to serve. And that's going to be starting back in September, the 1st of September. So be looking out for that. But that's a way that you can find and discover places to serve. Our choir, we have 90 seats up here. It would be great if we had more people in choir than we had seats for. It would be great if we had more people serving in the parking lot than we had need of people. And all we, we said, listen, just go. We don't, we don't need extra. We've got too many people in this ministry. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing to hear? We've got too many people. Can you, maybe you can do this or that. But we had so, many, so much help that we just put a sign in your hand at the, at the entrance to say, hey, welcome to New Hope as people drive in. Wouldn't that be amazing? But it's all of us doing our part. Everybody finding their place. Ephesians 4, Paul tells us that Christ gave gifts to the church to equip God's people for the work of the ministry, to build up the church, the body of Christ, to unity and maturity, growing more and more like Jesus, who is the head of his church. And he says this in Ephesians 4, 16, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The King James says, fitly joined together. That's the picture of the church, the body of Christ. Everybody has a place, everybody has a gift, everybody serve. That's the health and the strength and the maturity and the, and the unity that we will experience. I wanna read for you just a passage of scripture from Philippians and we're gonna take some time to, to just minister one to another. Can we do that? This is, what, this is what Paul said in Ephesians about Christ. He said, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and he was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Aren't you thankful that Jesus came not to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many? It's because of what he did on the cross that gives us this opportunity to receive and to give. We just give, give, give. He's the greatest example of a servant that we could ever choose to follow. And if we would just do the same thing, listen, I empty myself and I give myself away. I give myself to Christ to be used of him for his purpose and for his glory. And it might seem like, I, what am I really doing? I'm just... Spending a shift in the nursery once a month, changing diapers, holding, holding babies, uh, guiding preschoolers like herding cats. It takes somebody. We're ministering to our kids there. We're not just babysitting. There are lessons. We're teaching them. And you have an opportunity to step into that place and make a difference. I love the people who have invested in my kids. My, my youngest graduated from high school this year, but all my kids have gone through the early childhood department here at this church. And the, the relationships they have with people here who are like spiritual grandparents because they, they taught them in preschool, they still have that relationship today. Using the gifts that God has given you, just serving and giving, that's, that's what it's all about because of what Jesus has done. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes. If you're in the room today and you've not made Jesus Lord of your life, listen, he gave himself so that you could live. If you making a decision today to follow Jesus, to say, yes, I want in on that. I, I want to have life, eternal life. If that's you today, you just raise your hand. I'll pray with you. I want to see God do something incredibly miraculous in your life, changing you, transforming you, making you who he designed you to be. If you're joining online or you're here in the room and that's you, would you just pray this prayer? Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. 
Thank you for serving and emptying yourself, being a servant, taking my place so that I could live. I choose you, Jesus. You chose me first and I choose you back. Forgive me of my sin. Be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that decision, we want to we connect with you. I want us to close today with a time of ministry. So I want to invite you to stand. We've got a few minutes. We're going to sing a song. And while we do this, there are many people who raised a hand earlier just saying, and I, I have a need in my life. And we love time around the altars where we can minister one to another. And we're not going to try to cut this short. We're not going to try to make something happen. But if you have a need, whatever that is, maybe you need prayer for something physical. Maybe there's a situation in your family. Maybe it's something you're believing God for. Maybe it's just the stepping into being a servant, finding your place, and you're saying, God, I just, I'm making myself available. I'm going to say yes to you. I encourage you to come across the front here. We're going to pray one for another. We're going to serve one another. We're going to love one another. One of those words was pray. Pray, serve, love. This is what we are called to do as a body of Christ, interconnected. We need each other. So if you have a need, I want to invite you to come, and we're going to invite others just to come and pray with you. And then we'll pray and we'll dismiss at some point. But would you come if you have a need? May that be the prayer of our heart, God. We make room so that you can have your way and do whatever you want to in me and through me. God wants to use you. God didn't save you for you just to sit in a pew and keep this to yourself. He intends for you to use what he's given you for people around you, not just in this room for sure, but out there too. One of, these, uh, one of these sheets you can pick up. There's some here on the, on the communion table. They're at the centers in the lobby as well. But it just lists some of the uh, serve team opportunities that we have here at New Hope. My hope and my prayer is that every single one of us could say, this is what I do. This is how I serve. I go to New Hope. This is my church. I love Jesus. This is what I do there. Come be part of this with me. You know, the, the, not, not so that we can just engage people in getting the job done. That's, that's not the point. We don't hire people to do jobs here. We just serve. Because it's part of what God designed for us. How we're supposed to live. In relationship, serving one another. So pray. Pick one of these up. Pray about where God would have you. Try something on. Just, just say, hey, I don't know what that, what that, but I'll do that. And if you don't like it, you're not signing a contract for life. And we're not asking you to give 10 hours a week. Bite-sized chunks. Where you serve a service, you can attend another service. Or you clean for an hour and a half. Or mow for an hour and a half a week. Whatever. And while you're here, you're praying for your church. We love you. We're so thankful for each and every one of you. Let's be the church. Let's be who God designed us to be. Amen. Pick up one of these here at one of the centers. You can hand them to a pastor. Pray about it. Put it in uh, the giving boxes. Leave it at one of the centers. If you're interested, listen, we want, we want you to find your place. God bless you. We love you.